devices and it will seamlessly do that. And then the final thing here is the, is the um, sequence player. This looks pretty similar to the uh, uh, iPlayback interface. It's not an interface. I don't know why I didn't do it that way, but whatever. So we've got a sequence player which has the same method, start, stop, load, unload. Um, and based on if you're if I'm loading a version 1 file or a version 2 file, I handle them differently. For the version 2 file, this is what's going to be the opposite of that record form where we're starting up the, that thread, sitting in that extremely tight loop waiting for the next increment. And uh, for, every, for every time we tick, we look at, the, at every channel that's in the sequence. If the tick is on, you know, toggle the fidget output on. If it's off, we toggle the fidget input back off. And that's, uh, that's all that does. And like I said, I added support for uh, uh, playlists. You can actually go in here and do a new playlist. You can add a variety of sequences. So if you had you know, that many sequences, you can order them up and down and click play at the bottom and it'll just loop through that list of sequences and repeat if you have the repeat checkbox. You can create a more than one song show. So. In general, I find that nobody gives a crap about how I wrote it. They just want to use it. So I definitely have ever received an email of, hey, why did you do this? Or how can you do that? It's just, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, hey, can you add this feature to the grid to make it easier? No, no one cares how I wrote it. So <coughs> I'm guessing you're all the same, and that's fine. <laughs> um, so I guess I, what I wanted to do was just to go through and create um, a MIDI sequence and a WAV file sequence and show you how, basically how to use the software to create the show and then how to play it back. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug this stuff in and add a couple of lights. Is it time to change the tape yet, Griff? No, but I can Would stop it for a minute. Pause? Yes, so sure. I don't like to get a beverage or anything. Your numeric counter that doesn't really line up with anything. But there's no way to get that. Because what, what I want is when you're recording the song, if you, like, <coughs> say you sequence half the song, you probably don't want to sit there and listen to the first minute over and over again as you're adding the individual tracks for the later part of the song. Um, I have no way of figuring out when you press the stop button. In using MCI of where you are in the song to then take that, convert it to an MCI tick count value thing in order to start the song at that position later on. It's a feature that's put on my list in version one that I don't have a good way of doing it yet. So this one needs to be upgraded to that in 3.5. Oh yeah, I, well, I, but I usually do a new, I, last year, the first year I did it, and I did, uh, last year I did a new, a new, uh, an updated version, I'll probably do another one this year. It always comes out like the day after Christmas, so everyone doesn't give a shit until next year, but whatever. Doesn't give a what? Did I swear on the tape, bro? Yes, you did. <laughs> do we have editing capabilities? We can edit. Yeah. Hell yes. I swore on the Channel 9 tape that Dan did for my Sweet Earth project, and he got all angry with me. Oh, that was great. Yeah. That's great. I don't think that'll ever be up on channel nine. That's what I mean. You don't edit these things. You're like, no, they just go from the camera to the side. I'm like, All right. Yeah, you know, I've got to admit the uh, the presentation video that had some of the Wii Earth stuff. Yeah. I got a little motion sick watching that on the uh, on the web. Oh really? Yeah. I had to I had to sit down and have a little lie down <laughs> watching it. But hey. Because of me, or is that because of the? No, 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 no. It was just you know how the how the video is a little jittery, especially when you first oh, set yeah. up the VR goggles. You know because the camera's actually moving where your hands are moving, and you're sitting there pressing things. Do, and yeah, I, yeah. It, I mean, it happened when I tried it on and everything too. So. Mm -hmm. There were some people that that jumped off the board very quickly when I turned on the stereo effect. They were they would their eyes were all bloodshot and red. Great. So anyway, that's nothing to do with anything we're talking about today. So. Uh, the boards are hooked up. We plugged them in. The place hasn't burned down yet. The lights are hooked up. So we're gonna we're gonna see if this works here. I just questioned the second one because I built it here on the vlog. So uh, we're gonna give it a try. I'm gonna try to play back my the one that you saw in the video, which is the Christmas Eve in Sarajevo from TSO. I chose that one because no one had done that song yet, but now everyone has. So here we go. Press play. Let's see what happens. Hey, look at that. It works in everything. Four flashing. Oh, there we go. I can't go fast enough. <laughs> I've got to back up. <laughs> Are those the other ones? Yeah. Wow. 
nice and bright. Oh yeah, I'm thinking some of this. So that's that's the the thing. You already saw it in the video. It's far less impressive strung across lights in a conference room. So let's uh yeah. So there you go. Um, yay! Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, this this is the grid here is what the sequence data looks like, which is if you remember from the video, there was my Christmas tree in the corner that had three segments of lights, which would you know there was three notes basically in the intro. So you can see channel one, two, and three being toggled on and off, kind of like a sine wave there. And as more and more instruments kick in, you know, uh, they, they all turn on. So this took, I just did a minute of this, and it took about, I don't know, two or three hours just to sequence that much of the song. Um, just because you have to overlay the track, because, you know, the, the the Christmas tree, I did all at once for, the, for that full minute of the one, two, three, two, one, two, three, just back and forth, and then added on, you know, the other parts of the song, appending the data every time that I went. Um, so let me show you what, what, how a MIDI file loads up here. So if we create a new sequence. One question on that. What happens if you make a mistake? Um, you just have to go in and, and deselect the sequence. Well, you can do a couple things. If you're, I mean, not close this. If you do, if you do the record, let's yeah. say you do append, we'll play the existing. Let's say you just wanted to spaz out on channel eight for some reason. Yeah. And you're like, oh no, I didn't mean to spaz out. It'll ask you if you want to save or not. So you can hit no and it doesn't get put back to the grid. That's well Thank done. Thank you for that question, Grid. No problem. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go back to creating a MIDI file. Now, not, not all MIDI files make great sequences. It depends on how they were written. It depends on the instruments they use. Um, and it depends on the timing method they use. There's apparently two method, two timing methods for mini files. There's PPQ1, which is parts per quarter note. That's what the 48 is. It's 48 parts per quarter note. That's you know, the, the, the division thing that I was doing to get the military. That, that's, that's how it works. And there's, there's a second timing mechanism, which is older, but hardly anything uses it. So I don't support that one at all because I have yet to find a mini file that's in that format. So you have to have one that's done in PPQN format. So I just downloaded a bunch of random uh, MIDI files, some some Christmassy, some not. So let's just try a couple and see what happens. Um, you, 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 this was called Jingle Bells, wasn't it? Yep. I have Jingle Bell Raw. All right. So let's try that. So you see the grid changed here. We now have a MIDI channel column. And this song here has four channels. So it tries to auto number them, but because they come out in random orders, it doesn't always work. So let's just, we'll assign one to each fidget channel. We'll click OK and it'll process. It takes a couple of seconds to do that and should draw out the grid data. And hopefully there's some, there's some data. So there we go. So if we click play. That situation where you said the notes so uh, we need to be held. Right, that's what I'm going to go back and do right now. Let's go back in here.